hello everyone in this video we are going to see how we can build a reusable pipeline using the data fusion service of the google cloud so if you'll see in case of the data fusion which is built using the cdap open source platform in case of the data fusion there are multiple plugins are available so there are plugins for the source, the plugins for the sync, and also the plugins are available for the data transformation. So we can use in each of these plugins, uh, there are macros which we can use to set up the variable for these macros during the runtime. We don't need to set up, uh, we don't need to pass any hard-coded values. We don't need to write any hard code, use any hard-coded values. So we can use these macros and we can pass the parameter, we can pass the values during the runtime. And to set up the values for these macros, we are using the argument setter plugin, which is available in the data fusion. And we are using the JSON file. So in this JSON file, it is having all the keys and the values. Uh, so basically this is a config file. So it is having all the config parameter values and from this session, from this argument setter, the output of the argument setter will be passed to all other plugins like to the GCS uh, source plugin or to the data wrangling plugin and to the uh, big query uh, plugins. So, and it will be setting the values in all in the macros of all of these plugins. Okay. So the output of the that argument setter will be used to set up the macro values in the other plugins like GCS plugins or data wrangling plugin and the BigQuery plugin. So if you'll see here in this, uh, uh, this is the JSON file which I am using and this JSON file I have uploaded to my uh, Google Cloud storage, to, to the uh, Cloud storage bucket. You can see here, I have already uploaded this JSON file to my Cloud storage bucket. And from the from here, I'm accessing the JSON file using the argument uh, setter plugin. So if I open the argument setter plugin, and here you can see I have specified the path name for that JSON file. Okay. So from here, the output of this uh, JSON file, you will see the uh, config parameter JSON file. So here I have the uh, key and a value. So this is my macro name. Uh, so this is the recipe or the directives which we are going to pass to the data wrangling. And then this is the BigQuery data set. Uh, this is the input file name, source input file name from where I'm going to extract the data. And this is the table in the BigQuery where I'm going to store my data. And this is the schema which I will be using while uploading the data to the BigQuery table. So the, uh, the benefit of using the config parameter is like, let's say there is any changes in any of this field. Let's say you have changed, you, you are changing the input file path or you are changing uh, the schema as well. Let's say there is an uh, additional column which is there in the new input file. So you don't need to make any changes to your pipeline, to the data fusion pipeline. So you can basically make changes to the config file which you are passing to the pipeline. And if you want to add a new uh, column, so you can make, you can add here on the schema. If you want to change the input file path name or any input file name, so you can make those changes on the, on the parameter file uh, which you are using on that pipeline. So let's go to the pipeline and let's see. So what all other plugins are there? So this is the argument setter plugin and the values from this argument setter plugin is uh, it will be passed to other other uh, plugins to the GCS to data wrangling and to the big query. So if you go to GCS plugin, uh, you can see here I have used the macros. So you have to use the macro. You can use this. And you can use the, you can enable the macro, you can use the macro on each of those plugins. So right now I'm using the input path value. So this input path I'm passing from my, uh, from my input file, from my parameter file. 
Okay, so this is the input file uh, path. So this file name I have changed, but this is the input path which I am passing. And then similarly, if I go to the wrangling, the data wrangler. Uh, so here also you can see, I have added my recipes. So whatever the uh, uh, data transformation I'm doing, for example, I'm parsing the uh, uh, input file, which I'm reading as I'm parsing as CSV file. And then I'm, then I am dropping the uh, this body column, and then I am uh, changing the data type of some of the columns like row ID and ABB and IBU. So I am changing the data type of these columns, and all of these transformation steps or all of these recipes I have already added here on my parameter file, and I'm uh, basically so what I am doing I'm. Uh, reading the data from this parameter file okay and here i have set up again the macros so if you want to set up the macro you can use this to enable the macro and then you can pass the values to this macro during the runtime of the pipeline similarly also the schema i have set up so if i go to here i have also set up the schema as well and once you have set up you can run the validation just to ensure that all the values which you have uh, you have put all the values, all the input details are correct. Similarly, if I'll go to the BigQuery, so in the BigQuery also, I have used the data set macros. So uh, for data set also, I have for data set value, I am using, I'm not using any hard coded values here. So I'm using the macros and all these macro values are coming from that uh, JSON file. So similarly also, uh, for the BigQuery schema as well, I have used the uh, schema macros. I have used the macro as well for the schema as well. In order to run the pipeline, uh, so we, uh, when you are developing the pipeline, you can just save the pipeline. And to run the pipeline, I need to deploy the pipeline. So whenever I want to run the pipeline in the data fusion, I need to deploy the pipeline. So it is saying that pipeline is already exist. So let me change the name and let me try to deploy the pipeline with a different name. So now my pipeline is deployed and I can start running the pipeline. So before running the pipeline, I need to change some of the config parameter because I'm using a free trial account. Uh, so I may not have the uh, access to uh, so I I'll be having the access to use some limited resources. There are some portal limit which you which will be there on your free trial account. So for that I I have uh, changed the configuration parameter because as you know the data fusion when you are going to run the data fusion pipeline, so it is going to create an ephemeral cluster in the data prop. So if I go to uh cloud data prop you'll be able to see that the data fusion is creating so let's start the pipeline so i'll go ahead and as you can see it is asking me so this is the these are the macro values which i have a uh, macro name which i have set up and it is asking me to pass the values for for all of these macros during the runtime so when i click on run uh so then only it is asking me to pass the argument to all of these macros but i am going to pass the macros uh, to values for these macros uh, from this argument setter so i'll just go ahead and click on run and simultaneously we can go to the data prop we can see that uh this data fusion pipeline it's going to create the ephemeral cluster on the data pro. So if you a cluster will be created and the cluster will be also deleted as soon as the pipeline is completed, the cluster, this cluster will be also deleted. So as you can see, it has started creating the uh, cluster on the data pro and the cluster will be deleted as soon as my pipeline is completed. And here I'm storing the data inside this uh data set so this is the demo data data set which i'm using 
So right now there is no tables and let's wait for some time uh, till the pipeline is completed. So if you, while the pipeline is running, if you can go to the logs, if you, there is any issue on the pipeline, uh, so you can go and check where the issue is happening. So you can also go to the advanced log. You can see the advanced log or you can see just the basic logs. Okay. So this way, like you can debug your pipeline and you can see like where the issue is happening. Also, there is uh, like before deploying the pipeline, you can uh, do the preview run of your pipeline. So just to check uh, if all the configuration settings, all the parameter which you have used, the schema, uh, or the input file path name, all the input details which are used in that pipeline, all those details are correct or not, to ensure that you can do a preview run of your pipeline, okay? So uh, before deploying, so right now we have already deployed our pipeline, but before deploying your pipeline, you can do a preview run of our pipeline. So let's wait uh, till the pipeline is succeeded and then we can validate so here you can also see like uh, the pipeline has not yet started. So once the cluster is created, uh, then the pipeline will start running. So let's wait for some time. Now we can see the status has changed to uh, starting, okay? So if you'll see in case of the uh, data fusion, sorry. So if you'll see in case of the in case of the uh, data fusion, the so the status initially the status will be provisioning. So provisioning means where it is creating the data proc cluster, and from the provisioning, once the cluster are created, uh, the data proc clusters are created, then the status will change to starting, and then once the pipeline will start running the status will change to running and from running the status will change to either failed or succeeded okay so this is the these are the status which you will be able to see when you are running your pipeline so let's see what is the status now so now it is uh starting the pipeline let's wait now you can see the status has changed to running similarly you can also see some more details on the log as well so here this is the uh, basic log and if you want more advanced log you can go here you can see more advanced log so right now the pipeline is running So let's wait till the pipeline is succeeded. So this is a batch pipeline, obviously. And you can also create the streaming pipeline as well. So in order to create the streaming pipeline, uh, so when you are creating the data fusion instance, so there are basically, you can either create a basic edition or you can create a developer edition or you can create a uh, the enterprise edition so if you want to create a real-time pipeline let's say you want to ingest the data to the pop sub and then from the pop sub you want to extract the data uh, you want to use some data transformation and then finally you want to store the data in the big query so this kind of real-time pipeline you can only create using the enterprise edition of the data fusion so when you are creating the data fusion instance, make sure you have selected the enterprise edition if you want to create a real-time pipeline. Okay. So uh, apart from enterprise edition, that is basic and the developer edition as well. So right now the pipeline is succeeded and also you can see uh, the input, uh, the so the output record from for each of this block so from the GCS, uh, it has uh, 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 the it has resulted like the output record from the GCS is around twenty four hundred uh, eleven, 
Similarly, from the Wrangler, from the data mass formation, the record are around 24, uh, 2410. Okay. So that is a uh, header record. So that header we have removed. So that's why the record count has reduced by one. Similarly, all those records, you can see there is no error. And all those records are already uploaded to the BigQuery table. So if you'll replace the BigQuery data set, we can see that uh, the uh, records are already loaded to this table. Okay. So this is how we can uh, create a config driven pipeline. Okay. Using the argument setter. And uh, if you want to make any changes, uh, let's say there is a change in the input file. Accordingly, the uh, change in the schema of the BigQuery. So you can just change only on the file which you are using on the argument setter. You don't need to make any changes on the uh, remaining plugins. Okay, so that that that's the advantage of using uh, a config driven pipeline, a config and creating a config driven a config driven data fusion pipeline. Okay, so thank you. That's all uh, I had for this video.